We're not going to Vietnam. We're refusing our orders, and in fact, we're resigning from the military. Come and get us. You must understand, I like being a Green Beret. I thought it was good. The problem I had was realizing that what I was doing was not good. I was doing it right, but I wasn't doing right. During the Vietnam War, an anti-war movement emerged that altered the course of history. This movement didn't take place on college campuses, but in barracks and on ships. It flourished in army stockades, navy brigs, and the dingy towns that surrounded military bases. Hundreds went to prison and thousands into exile, and by 1971 it had, in the words of one colonel, infested the entire armed services. Mr. President, there's a terrible demonstration going on outside. Oh, there's always a demonstration going on outside, Pat. Yeah, but Richard, this one is completely out of control. They're storming the White House. Oh, in that case, I better call out the 3rd Marine. You can't, Richard. Why not? It is the 3rd Marine. Yes. They had nothing to lose. It's a really free place. <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen, you know where you're going, but you know what you're doing. Within two days of hitting the stockade, I was facing the death sentence <laughs> for saying that we should overcome. This man didn't do me nothing. He heard none of my black people, none of my families. So why should I shoot him? A new phenomenon has cropped up at several army bases these days, a so-called underground GI press. There must have been close to 300 anti-war newspapers. It was wherever there were GIs, American GIs in the world. At that point, it really became crystal clear to me that something changed in it, and that something very, very important was happening. What would stop that war was when the soldiers stopped fighting it. <laughs>